All right, we're live with Alexandra to give the briefest of uh, introductions for the sake of time. It's been eight years. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> we uh, used to take international ethics and yeah. ma maybe maybe another political science class together. You correct Could me. Could have been. We were on the same track, so I'm sure yeah. we had more than one class. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure of it too. And it's great because I always love people who are able to hit different parts, right? Some people think of themselves as just the mind, some people just the body. But when you're able to hit both of those things, I think it's very great. Just the other day, I saw Alexandra squatting 165 pounds. And without getting too much into your weight, I know you can't possibly weigh that much. <laughs> and so I was very impressed. I know what that weight feels like. And, you know, it's no ballpark for someone who's close to 200 pounds. So that was very awesome. And I just wanted to, to hear about how you got involved in, in strength training. You know, um, you're not just bookie, I guess. Yeah, well, I don't know if you remember from eight years ago, but I was this scrawny little thing. I mean, I'm small now, but I was like really tiny, never lifted a weight in my life. I was like, I mean, even like, you know, when you get on a plane and you have to put up your your carry on. Yep. That was like a struggle for me. You know, like I was always the girl who needed help uh -huh. getting stuff everywhere. Anyway, so like after we graduated from Pepperdine, I started to work full time, you know, at a desk. And that's yeah. when I started to feel like pretty much like an old lady, to be honest. <laughs> like, like my back was killing me. Like at least at Pepperdine, like we had stairs, you know, oh, and yeah, we had a walk, day. we had to get to class. And, you know, say what you say about, you know, freshman 15 or whatever, but I was, I was actually pretty active and not even like, intentionally just because of how the campus was set up but I never really exercised um yeah. and then I started to realize when I started working that I was like always in pain and just like my back was hurting I just I didn't feel good so I started working out just doing like some basic you know cardio classes and stuff like that um and then eventually started lifting weights um, and I got into that actually mostly because of my, my boyfriend who is uh -huh. actually a personal trainer That's and awesome. he didn't train me, but he definitely pushed me to start to lift weights. He's like, you can do more. And I was so scared of it that I had no idea that was possible. Was it the first time? Like, did he say, Hey, Alexandra, why don't you try lifting weights or because I'm wondering, you know, if, if y'all been together for a while, was it like the repetition? Oh, wow. Like how many, how many, how many times did he <laughs> say it to you before you're like, all right, I'll give it a try. Well, here's what happened is we, we met in the gym. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was like six years ago and I was like the kind of gym person that would be at the treadmill yep. and then maybe the bike and like maybe a couple of like stationary machines. I had no clue what I was doing. And he came like up to me and I at the bike or just steady state, like steady state. Like I was so basic, so basic in, in what I knew and what I thought I could do. And I was, it was just mostly just, you know, very light. It wasn't even like I was working up a sweat or anything. And then uh, one day he came up to me and we stroke up a conversation. We started talking. And then eventually he, um, you know, was like, well, do you want to work out together? And I said, okay, sure, let's work out together. And then as we were working out, he was like kind of testing kind of like what my strength was. Mm -hmm. And I had never really thought about that before. Yeah. And it was like, even just from like that initial, like first time he was just like, I think you can do this if you were able to do this before. And so I started to realize like I was a little stronger than I thought. And then the next couple times, like every single time he'd be like, we'd work out together and he wasn't like training me, you know, mm -hmm. right by my side, but he would say, you know, I think you can do a little bit more weight. Um, and then eventually like over time, I mean, it's, it takes forever to gain yeah. strength, to be honest. I mean, at least to do it safely, you know? Um, so it wasn't like overnight, of course, but it, you know, just having somebody like show me that that's possible was where it really started because I really hadn't thought about it much. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like it came off overbearing at all. It's like almost, uh, you know, giving you little crumbs and letting you kind of, you know, just giving you the manual and letting you kind of read the the manual yourself. I mean, a lot of people avoid 
you know, leg day. Like that's the big thing. Like everyone mm -hmm. jokes about, you know, chicken legs. Like it's a big like macho man thing to do upper body and then ignore the legs. And even at Pepperdine, you know, people are like, oh, I walked all these stairs. So I'm going to skip leg day. I'm probably guilty of it a couple of times myself back then. <laughs> but um, yeah, just like the idea of focusing on like big lifts like that and I, I just, I don't, I don't see that everywhere. It's not like nobody's doing it, but I, I definitely think even now it's like a, it's like a minority because there, there's so many things that you can do in the gym that sometimes some of those, those bigger, like classic lifts get neglected. <laughs> did you still incorporate some of that cardio stuff or did you go all in on strength? All in on strength. <laughs> I never looked back. I never looked back. It's funny because like now I do cardio and it's okay. It's not like, you know, I guess it's just, you know, like last night I did 15 minutes on the row machine, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll throw in some stuff like that here and there, but it's really just to keep a little bit of balance, which is something that I learned early on was I was doing so much strength training that I wasn't doing any cardio and also my flexibility was starting mm -hmm. to take a toll. So then I started incorporating cardio and yoga in the last uh, two great. years. I've been doing yoga like two or three times a week religiously, totally changed the game for me. I, I can lift a lot better now because I'm more flexible and yeah. I'm not hurting so much in between um, my workouts as well, which is also probably one of the reasons people hate leg day. Cause not only does it hurt like, while you're doing it but then after you're done for days later you're like yeah. hobbling around you don't necessarily need to do it that way like there are ways you can do it where you're not that sore and then also like doing things like yoga to help with that is what made it possible for me because i i don't think it's healthy to lift that heavy without having also like a balance on the other end so i try to do cardio and other stuff to kind of balance it but i really enjoy strength training the most to be honest I, i'm so glad to, to yeah. hear you say that i i do cardio you know not for the sake of it just like like you like it sounds like a cherry on top type of deal like yeah. it's not the main meal it's like the dessert you know it's not the main course and it's predominantly you know through jujitsu or basketball or you know what i mean like something like where i'm acting competitively and and my main goals have been strength too so to to hear you saying that as well it's like a confirmation bias for me so i'll, I'll take it <laughs> and it's it's really great i see you all also opened up a relatively local i'm still in la um gym too could you tell us a little bit about that in case some some of the listeners are close enough to sign up yeah that'd be amazing um so it's in agora hills uh, so if you know where that is, Calabasas mm -hmm. area, kind of close to Pepperdine, honestly. Um, you know, we I've stayed in the area. I never left, really. Um, but that I think this area is really starting to grow in terms of like health and fitness. I'm, we've seen a lot of gyms and studios pop up in the last few years, uh, which is interesting. But this was basically my boyfriend's baby. You know, mm -hmm. he as a personal trainer has always wanted his own space. I was totally on board with it. You know, I went to Pepperdine, got my MBA. I was like ready to start a business. And yep. so uh, that was really exciting because I'm really passionate about fitness. And so an opportunity came up that we really couldn't say no to. And it's a really awesome space. Um, it's completely private. So it's all personal training. So it's not wow. like a oh, public yeah. gym membership. It's mm -hmm. just for like, if you want to get personal training and there's no BS, no like long-term contracts or like public people coming in and using the gym where it's like mm -hmm. super crowded. So it's like supposed to be an appointment only kind of situation, really private. Um, and so far it's been really great. We have some amazing trainers. Um, I think right now we have like 10 trainers that are just like, I mean, every time I see them train, I'm always amazed at like how good they are yeah. because I'm like, how did we end up with such amazing trainers? Cause not all trainers are made the same, honestly. Like they're not all equal. Um, but man, they're really, they're really good. They, you know, they always impress me. Um, and I'm not a trainer myself, but I mm -hmm. can definitely appreciate that kind of, you know, career and taking that path. It's, they work with all kinds of people, you know, it's really, really cool what they're doing. A lot of transformations happening. And it's pretty recent. We just opened up, you know, it's like six months ago. 
So yeah. most of the time it was kind of coronavirus, but I, I was just gonna <laughs> get you. Yeah, you read my mind. I I don't know if, if it's like an over talked about um, subject. I know I know you got to head out soon, but maybe you could close on your thoughts on like, have you all been tell? I know you're not the coach, but have you been tele coaching? And you said you got your your yeah. MBA. A lot of MBAs I know actually use it to get into like larger corporations. I don't meet that many who are into entrepreneurship, which is another thing I'm passionate about. So the fact that you're into strength and entrepreneurship is really cool. But I imagine because you have a little bit of the subject matter knowledge, you know, six years now, you said you've been working at it in, in addition to the business side, you know, how is it adjusted in the midst of Corona? Yeah, it's tough, you know, so a lot of FaceTime, which mm -hmm. unfortunately is just not really the same experience, you know, so, uh, you know, FaceTime was definitely a way that a lot of people were getting training during this time and keeping consistent. I was actually really impressed because I thought as soon as this happened, people would be like, nope, not going to do anything. And I know a lot of people probably did that, but at least the people who were really committed to their trainers and to their health, they, they stuck with it. And in fact, I even heard some of them say it was harder to do over FaceTime. Wow. And I think that might be because of the type of workouts you have to do with somebody who just doesn't have equipment. Yeah. So at their, home, yeah. at their home, like you have to do, I mean, it, it takes so much adjusting to be able to accommodate somebody in their own home. Um, but you know what? They did it and it worked mm -hmm. and trainers had to be super creative. Um, mm -hmm. We had some clients still coming to the gym just very sparingly by appointment only. The whole world of like disinfecting has totally changed to something that no one was really prepared for and like not something that was considered really that much when we were thinking about opening up a gym. Cause like you think about, okay, keeping it clean, but now this new level of, of cleanliness is, um, it's, I mean, frankly, it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with, but yeah. I understand it of course. Um, but it's, it's like a new thing that gyms are just struggling with, I think is how, how do you, how do you do that? Cause it's, especially larger gyms where they have constantly people, at least this one, it's, you know, pretty private. So it's easier to maintain, but, um, man, I, I've, I've just heard stories of people trying to go back to their gyms and it's like, it's, you have to make an appointment. It, it's, I don't know. How, yeah, how has it, it been that's for, huge cost. for you? Well, are you? Where are you working out from home? Yeah. I see so your I'm Instagram a home, posts. Yeah. 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 I'm a home gym rat. So in terms of strength training, what I did is, um, I'm guilty of like not really doing anything for martial arts. And part of that is like, you know, the social distancing. It's like, I don't live with anybody that I'm going to do martial arts with, like do submission holds on or anything like that. <laughs> and like I, a little dummy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, people sell dummies. And I thought about that doing so that. Weird. And I've, I've joked around, you know, I, I work in schools too. And like, I, I did a video one time where I, I did a triangle choke or submission on a, on like a giant teddy bear. And I do that with pillows and stuff sometimes just a little practice. Cause you need, you need to do something. It's been three yeah. months now though, since I have not, um, basically sparred in martial arts. So what I did is I turned up my, my strength routine. I had a, a 35 pound kettlebell that I was using for a while, but then I, I moved, um, just temporarily for Corona. And during this time, what I had at this place is my deadlifting bar and then my, my pushups. So I've been mostly doing like deadlifting and pushups for like 12 weeks. And I had such a hard time getting a new kettlebell. And then finally I was able to, after the longest order one, and so I got a new 45 pound one. So I just nice. started um, doing that. So I, I've been doing this uh, workout that includes like uh, plyometric, like jump, you know, jumping pushups with your feet and uh, and the front two, in addition to the kettlebell swings. And that's what I've been transitioning to. But I always have like my bar ready to do um, deadlifts. I don't, I don't have like a proper squat rack at home, so I can't do like a proper squat, but I mm. could do like a, a kettlebell squat for, for more reps, or I could do a lighter weight of, um, of front squats because um, that's easier because <laughs> I don't have to worry about like falling down backwards or in, in any weird ways. So I've, I'm definitely guilty of like falling off in one sense, but I, I'm overcompensating in the other side. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. You just have to adjust, you know, um, basically, I mean, at least from what I've found is there are ways to, to, to still be active and, and work out, but mm -hmm. you're obviously going to always miss having the weights if that's what you're used to. 
Yeah. Do you have like a home gym set up too, or you you like still going into the? No, private? I'm just saying. Well, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to just be able to go in. To, yeah, to yeah. I didn't really have to adjust, which was like pretty amazing. In fact, I've, I think I've gotten stronger during this quarantine. <laughs> That's and, amazing. Which is which is awesome. Um, and I'm working really to get stronger. It's so funny too, because like my. I think my mom was asking me, she's like, what are you doing this for? Like, why yeah. are you, why are you doing this? And I'm just like, cause I, I love doing it. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, there's something satisfying about getting stronger, meeting goals. And like, I think for a woman, especially it's like extra empowering to be able to know that like you can be strong enough to do it. And I think yeah, even if I ass. hadn't, I know. And if I, if I, even if I hadn't had that gym, like I would have figured something out, you know, mm -hmm. even if it meant having to carry a rock up a hill, like <laughs> oh, I yeah. would have done it, you know, I, I like saw some creative stuff. workouts and I would have figured something out. Cause I, at this point can't imagine not having that. And mm -hmm. it's just kind of a part of me. It's not really like, uh, I guess for some people it's like a chore. Like I, I don't, it's not like that for me. No. Um, although some days, you know, I, I kind of push myself to go if I'm tired, but well, I never regret it, you know? Yeah. That, I, it's all about, you know, living long, but then also like living well. So you're find your balance. And you mentioned that earlier in terms of people who are straining themselves too much, you know, you could, could just turn the weight down a little bit and still yeah. show up and, and get through it. But I really liked how you began, like you began by talking about sometimes people sift through job descriptions and they, they skip over little things. Like it says, must be able to carry 25 pounds, must be able to carry 40 pounds. And one of the measures that like longevity experts use on people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, and then the people who eventually live to 100 is they're not measuring like, can you squat a thousand pounds? Mm -hmm. They're measuring at age 80, at age 90, will you still be able to lift 40 pounds? And I think the the way that you're building the blocks now, um, you know, <laughs> Lord willing, permitting that we get there, it seems like you're setting yourself up for success at, at those later ages. And, and I liked how you're, you're taking it as a form of empowerment to women. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to like give people examples and encourage people, but sometimes, you know, it just comes off too preachy and they'll don't want to hear it. Totally. So I think like sometimes like these types of testimonies that, you know, you're given, um, I think might be able to be that little straw on the back that, that gets somebody to break that camel and, and, and begin their, their strength training. And, and I really like the scale of it too. The, the way you're, I've only seen a couple gyms like that before one in the Valley and then one in the, in the Fairfax area where it's like appointment only that that's a real, like strong way to be building your base. So you, you know, like you're going to be surviving the things. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, but he has this, um, idea that he calls anti-fragile or anti-fragility. And he says that fragile people are those who are worse off when chaos or disorder comes. He says that the robust are those who just survive. And then the people who actually gain from disorder, who gain from chaos, he calls them anti-fragile. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what you're doing. It's like, do you say, oh, everyone's got these Corona blues and you're like, well, I got stronger. Like <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a great message. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, it, it's, it, it's not always easy for people to, to get into that mentality, to get into that habit of starting something new like that it could seem really intimidating. Um, and it doesn't have to be like that much of a, you know, all or nothing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, gradually getting into it, having a trainer is, is awesome. I mean, honestly, if I didn't have a, if I didn't have my boyfriend looking at what I was doing, I would have never felt comfortable mm -hmm. doing like getting into that. Like if you're looking to really start getting serious, training's the way to go. And that's why, that's why we wanted to do this because we figured out that, you know, people who need a trainer or who get a trainer, they always have more success than doing it on their own. And um, it's, it's just, it's having that person there to like, tell you or just confirm that push you to reach more and more limits but like at a gradual pace is something that a lot of people can't really do on their own or shouldn't do on their own so yeah i mean we're hoping that you know from this people just you know be ready to jump back in post quarantine if they haven't already 
Um, so, but you know, even so we've, like I said, we've seen like surprisingly a lot of people who were working with us just continue throughout this time. Like I know a lot of people who did get stronger through quarantine. It's amazing. Um, so if they could do it through quarantine at home, you know, now that we're starting to open things up and gyms are open, you know, there's no excuse. We can, oh, are y'all we can opening all... up fully pretty soon or we, we are, we have been, That's great. we've been open for a week officially. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's really encouraging to see people excited to be back in an actual gym and to have seen them go through all of quarantine and have like actually stuck with their goals and their plans. Not everybody did, but the one, I was surprised that so many did, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. Yeah. I I don't want to come off to anyone as like a medical expert, but another reason why I wanted to highlight this is, and, and I'm not the only person who said this, is what can we do to like mitigate? You know, we're waiting on this vaccine, but one of the things we can do to mitigate is like literally strengthen our body. You know, if that increases like our chances by 1% or half a percent, you know, I don't have any numbers or data to back it up, but I'm, I'm sure it's better to be strong and then get sick or then not be strong and get sick just because I know the way that our physical a body and our and our our health are connected. So I'm so glad that people are continuing and that y'all are opening up. I don't want to hold you too much. So yeah, you're gonna have to come I, back I and we're gonna have, have to, to do politics or <laughs> international relations one oh, day. Oh gosh, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's okay. We, you're, did, you're we always had some good conversations though. That's what I remember about you most is like that class was especially good for having those really philosophical conversations about ethics mm -hmm. um always a good always a good time to have like that kind of talk with somebody like you you know you were a senior too right we were yeah, senior yeah. Year? Yeah, oh no no, no. I, I was i was a year before i was junior technically. okay well, I, okay i graduated in three years so i was sort of i guess i was sort of a senior but okay you were gifted. um <laughs> no, I was just not wanting to pay for another year of college. <laughs> hey, finesse, uh, finesse. Like other people should have did that. Yeah, and and that was in the home too. So there's yeah. a theme: home, home ethics, uh, home gym for me. But y'all, y'all got your own private training, which is it's it's almost like a halfway between a home gym and like a a, a mega gym. Be like with that with that vibe, with that scale, that that kind of yeah. personal, personally tailored plans for everyone there. Totally, totally. And and I think that's, I think that's how most people see results is when it's like at that scale, versus like, you're just like a number or, you know, somebody walking into a big gym, and you don't even know where to go first or what to do. And you're kind of like wandering around trying to fight for, you know, a machine. Uh, I think especially for people just starting, it's totally the way to go. It's like private training. Yeah, that's awesome. If, even I like would not be able to do the things that I do by myself if I didn't originally get trained by how many football coaches and how many weightlifting coaches, you know, in, in high school and stuff. So that that's so awesome. Thank you for joining me. And whenever you have more time, hit me yeah. up and we'll get into it. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.